Every summer, we talk about the same thing, backpack safety. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's something that comes up every single year. Thanks for joining us this week on Living a Full Life podcast. I'm Dr. Enrico Dolcecori, and we're going to talk about backpack safety. Backpack safety is actually really important. As funny as it sounds, like how dangerous can a backpack be? Well, it's not that it's going to bite you like an alligator, but it is something that can cause chronic conditions in a younger population. It's something that happens all the time. So backpack safety, the biggest mistake that is always made is the backpack is just too big for the child. So this is the little ones that we're talking about, maybe kindergartners, first graders, second graders. They put on these backpacks that are literally bigger than them. That's a big no-no. I don't care what the schools say or what the teachers say that they need. That is a no-no. As a parent and coming from a chiropractor that knows maybe a little bit about the spine, we should not be doing anything that is heavier or bigger than the child's torso. So let's go through some things about backpacks and, and our kids. And this is mainly for the parents with elementary schools, um, children aged. Uh, your high schoolers and your college students can take care of themselves and they've developed a frame that's big enough. And if they have a backpack that's bigger than them, I'm I'm very surprised if your teenager has something like that. That's that's crazy. But for your little kids, let's talk about the right thing. The backpack should not be wider or longer than their torso. So they're back. It should not, you know, it should not hang more than four inches below their waistline. It should be right right about that waistline or above would be even better. It should not carry up too high on their shoulders. Make sure that the weight of the backpack does not exceed 10% of their body weight. I don't know about you. This year we've got a third grader, a second grader, and a VP care. Our VP care is 41 pounds. That means her backpack cannot be more than four pounds. I think the backpack itself, the cloth, weighs three pounds. So it, it makes zero sense to put our kids in these backpacks. And we're talking about things like where the child needs probably to walk to the bus stop or gets off of a bus and has to walk all the way through the school. Typically, elementary school children, when they get to their classrooms, take their backpack off and that's it. It's not something that's carried around like a, a junior high student or a high school student where they jump from class to class. So that's usually not the issue. But we want to teach proper usage of a backpack. So using both straps, they're, they're designed with two straps for a reason. We have two shoulders. They have to go over there and then adjusting them so that it doesn't ride too high up where it's hitting the back of their neck or too low where it's dipping below their waistline, like we talked about earlier. So adjust those straps and use both of them. Um, organize the contents in there, making it bulky or having things that stick out the wrong way can actually extend the width or the diameter of the backpack and make them hunch forward because it's just digging into their back. Something as simple as that. Just make sure books are flat against the back, um, iPads, whatever, lunch boxes, whatever has to go in there, paper folders, whatever it is, stack them straight up and just organize it every now and then keep them clean. There's a sanitary uh, tip for you as well, but we're talking about more of the structure of how to use it. So organize the contents that are in there and make sure that we keep unnecessary items out of it just for the weight of the backpack. Use the compartments. They're designed there for a reason. Smaller things in the smaller pouches, larger things in the larger pouch. And then wear the waist belt. There's a waist belt that comes with most backpacks. And I highly recommend this for the children under 10 years of age to be using it. Are they going to? No. Remember going to school when you were a kid? I used like the one strap because I had to look cool. But those things don't help us in the long run. They actually throw our posture off. Uh, women, listen to this closely. Your purses with one strap. That's probably why you all have neck pain and why I have job security for the rest of my life. Um, wear both straps. And if you do wear a purse, wear it across the body. I hope you understand what I'm saying there. So you put the strap around your right shoulder, but this thing will hang on your left hip. Does that make sense? Kind of like a satchel. That's how we should be wearing our purses. But just carrying them on, on our shoulder on one side just lowers the, the shoulder on that too. So there's a little side note as well when it comes to purses and backpacks. Let's go back to our children. Wearing that waist belt is very, very important. It actually takes a lot of the force of the load and distributes it from the shoulder straps in the shoulder and the waistline and cuts it in half, which is really great. So let's say we do have an eight-year-old, like I do, and they weigh 70 pounds. And they have a 14-pound backpack or a 10-pound backpack. Now we're already in trouble for the weight. They're going to have to lean forward a little bit. And that puts a lot of weight on their shoulders and carries their head folder, uh, forward as well, 
which can cause a lot of neck strain. Believe it or not, I've had my girls come home from school saying their neck hurts or their shoulder hurts. And that's not normal for a seven or an eight year old to be saying that. So these are why we have this podcast and why I'm doing a PSA on this is that we definitely want to make sure we're using the tools that we have, the equipment that we have properly. Uh, a backpack has two straps. It has a waist belt. It's important. Uh, and we want to be using all of them and we want to teach our kids to do it as well. Good luck with that. But we do want to teach them with that. Be mindful of posture. Teach your kids about posture. This is a great time to teach kids about posture. When they, when my kids ask me, well, dad, what is good posture? I'm like, well, when you put your back against the wall, your head can touch the wall, your shoulders can touch the wall, your lower back can touch the wall and your butt cheeks can touch the wall. If you, and your heels can touch the wall. If you can do that without falling left or right or forward, that's great. That's where we want to try and maintain our posture. So when we say, watch your posture, that's the position you want to get into is just a straight back posture. Uh, where we keep the head above the body. That's really it. We don't have to whip our shoulders back or do any, stick our chest out or anything like that. That's not good posture either. It's really just bringing the head back over the shoulders. That's the most important thing that we can teach our kids when it comes to being our posture and being mindful, mindful of it. It's just something you always have to reassess throughout the day. You should be reassessing your posture every, you know, 15 minutes when you work at a desk, be like, oh yeah, shoulders back, chin back. Shoulders back, chin back. It should be something you should always remind yourself. That's how you create new habits when it comes to your posture. Posture is a mindful thing. It's taught in a lot of the martial arts uh, at a young age. So if any of you were, were lucky to be in martial arts at a young age, it comes from Eastern teachings. Uh, posture is very important in those cultures, whether it comes from Japanese martial arts, Chinese martial arts, Korean martial arts, wherever it comes from, they all are adamant about posture. I was lucky to do Hapkido and Taekwondo as a kid. So I remember them coming around with that stick. I don't think they're allowed to do that anymore. And they would just like run it from your shoulders all the way down your back if you were slouching. Just, really, you know, just a quick, you know, roll down your back. And you'd be like, oh, and it would just, it would hurt a little bit, but it would just put it and you'd remember uh, good posture and to run with good posture because you're stronger with good posture. And if you fall with good posture, you're less likely to get hurt. So those are the things that come with that. So be mindful about posture. Teach your kids about posture. Uh, get your kids checked by a chiropractor. If you don't go very often, find a good uh, pediatric one that, through, your, through your parent groups, through your sources. You know somebody who knows somebody that's good. That's the person you go to. You get assessed at least every school year. Um, some of them even do back-to-school physicals. It's a great time to just get a spinal assessment. We forget about spine assessments. Your pediatrician and your medical doctor have zero to no training in musculoskeletal human anatomy. Nothing. Absolutely zero. They have no time for it in medical school, and they don't learn it. They don't know what it means. That's why they... They easily just shoo off uh, sports injuries because they're like, ah, whatever, here's an anti-inflammatory or here's a painkiller or here's some ibuprofen. And it's been like that for 50 years is because they're not changing the curriculum for them. They're not, there's no time for them to learn because the, the society is getting sicker and sicker and sicker. So the curriculum for medical school is just more pathology, more pathology, more pathology. That's it. And pharmaceuticals. So that, if you're wondering why. So that's why having a good pediatric chiropractor in your corner talks about posture. You can get an, an x-ray assessment, you know, once every five years or so after a certain age, monitor scoliosis, monitor growth, a lot of great things there. Posture comes, um, it's just like teeth, going to the dentist, making sure teeth are healthy and aligned. It's the same thing when it comes to posture. Uh, limit unnecessary items. This goes back to number one with the weight. If we just start cluttering our backpacks, they just get heavier and we just don't need that. So books that aren't needed for that day can stay in the bedroom, can stay on, on the desk, and then uh, used when they get home for their homework. Uh, regularly clean it out. That's a sanitary thing. A lift with care. Teach your kids to lift with care, especially the older ones, fourth, fifth, sixth, sixth graders. Their backpacks are starting to get a little bit heavier. They got maybe a laptop in there. Teach them how to lift properly. A lot of times when we're rushing out for school, we grab the backpack, we swing it over our shoulders, we're turned, we're also putting on a shoe at the same time. You wonder how your 10-year-old is able to do that. You look at it and you strain your back just watching them do that. Um, that's the risks of an injury is right there. Is, that's how things can happen is with bad posture and being rushed. So picking up the backpack in front of you, swinging it over your shoulders, putting both straps on there or getting mom or dad to help you is a great tip there as well. 
encourage locker use for kids that do have lockers at school, right? When they get to school, put their backpack in the locker, take the books that they need for their next class or vice versa. Leave the books that are not needed till the afternoon in their locker, take the ones that they need so they can lighten the load and then they can carry that between the two classes in that morning. And then monitor for discomfort. This is really important. Don't um, ignore discomfort that your kids have. Yes, they heal. Yes, they wake up the next day and most of the discomforts are gone. But if your child says something for two or three days in a row, especially if it's anything related to a headache, neck strain, or low back pain, it's something that you want to get assessed. And the best place to go, again, is your chiropractor. Um, get it assessed there because they'll have the tools to, to check for muscle injury, strain, sprain, subluxation, spinal misalignment, anything that could happen to the back that could cause these types of issues. So monitor discomfort. Don't let it linger. Headaches are never normal in children ever, ever. If you go to your pediatrician and you tell them we've had a headache for all week and it's unrelentless and it's not going away, they will send straight for a brain scan because medicine is trained in pathology and they're going to go check the brain right away. And our culture is trained for pathology. So you agree with the pediatrician. You automatically as a parent go to the worst possible diagnosis ever in the universe and you're more than happy to go get the brain scan for your child. You should absolutely listen to that. But we go there because we're trained as a culture that the worst could possibly happen even though it's so, so, so rare. So we get, we, get, we get these all the time and rarely, if ever, have I seen the worst things that, that I've learned in school about brain tumors, uh, lesions on the brain, um, pathologies that happen. Usually all these scans come back normal, which clears everybody and they're all happy to see the chiropractor at that point. But if we do it in the other order, we can rule out the most likely things first, save time, same, save effort, and you don't know this, but most chiropractors can send out for MRIs very easily. So monitor for discomfort and talk to your teachers. Have good dialogue between teachers. Uh, make sure that they are open to listening to your requ uh, re requisitions for your children and what uh, you deem safe for them to take home. So uh, if they're overloading their backpacks with a bunch of stuff, have open discussion with them saying, hey, how do we meet in the middle here? How do we leave some of this stuff in the school classroom? Uh, because this does not work for my child. You just have to be and stand the ground for your kids. And educate on the long-term effects. Help your children understand that carrying heavy backpacks can improperly lead to long-term back problems. And that will save you a bunch of issues during this school year. Those are the most common tips that I have. Those are the most common questions that I have as a chiropractor. And it's funny, I haven't done this podcast yet, but this one's really important when it comes to child safety because uh, they're going to be in school for 10 months out of the year. They're going back and forth every single day. These things add up very quickly. And that's what ends up happening with backpack safety and posture in the long run. So really important doing these things. Have a great week. If you have any other tips or requests from us, just send them our way and we'll take care of you moving forward in the podcast. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. Stay healthy.